To be able to adjust the cells as far as columns and rows go, and I'm looking at column A, which is about yay big. Okay, what's the size of a yay big? I'll go over the measurements in just a minute. But to be able to find out the measurements for that column, as well as to adjust the size for it, the width that is, you just need to hover over to the right-hand side of the column label, or the column header for that, which is A. Or if you want to do it for B and find out and adjust the size of it, go over to the right-hand side of B, but just before C, until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. So let's go back, so we're to the right-hand side of A, but before B. So when I see those arrows, just go ahead and click, and you can see in the pop-up the size of that column, column A, which is 11.69, or 161 pixels. And then to make it wider, drag to the right. To make it shorter, drag it to the left. Let go, and there you go. You can also do it for rows. So if I want to make row 5 larger, let me hover below row 5, but above 6, until I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Then click and drag down to about 40.80, 95 pixels. Let go, and there we go. And if I want to go ahead and collapse it, click and drag. And if I go too far, it gets cut off. And I'm like, oh, that's horrifying. Let's go ahead and click and drag it. And I'm like, oh, that's too much space. And I keep playing this game of pushing it so it's just right. You can do what's called an auto fit by hovering over in between the two rows or column headers and double clicking really fast. So below 5 to adjust 5 until I can see arrows pointing up and down. Double click really fast. It does an auto fit. In other words, it takes the largest data within that row and fits it to that height. And everything's the same size. It's size 10, so that worked out well. But as far as column A goes, you can see that Camping Gear US bleeds over into column B. So if I want column A to include that and not have it, you know, get cut off, well, it's not cut off because there's nothing over in column B. But to be resized to fit all that, and then go ahead and hover over to the right hand side. And you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Double click really fast. And hey, isn't that fun? Let me go ahead and click and drag it back. Now, if you're not good at double clicking or you don't want to do that, just go ahead and click anywhere within the column or row that you want to adjust or do the auto fit and then come up here on the Home tab and go over to the Sales Group. Click on the Format, and there you go. There's the Auto Fit for the row and the Auto Fit for the column. Let me go ahead and click on it. I didn't think it was going to work. I probably need to shut down and restart my computer. But if I go ahead and click on the column header A and select the entire column, and then I come back here and do Format to Column Width, the Auto Fit that is, then it'll do it. As opposed to, like, if I come down here and I click and drag just below 5, but above 6, and I click anywhere within that row, and I come back up here and I want to do the auto fit for the row height, click on it, it does it. Great. Now, not only can you do it for an individual row or column, you can do it for multiple selections. So, for example, if I go ahead and let's do it for the rows here, let me click on row header 7, go down to 10, and if I go ahead and hover in between any one of these selected row headers, so I can see arrows pointing up and down, and I click and drag, let go, it adjusts all of them to the same height. And of course, you can also do an auto fit. So just go ahead and double click really fast in between any one of those selected row headers and it does the auto fit. Cool. Now, if you want to get more persnickety and you're like, okay, I got to have it exactly this height. And you know your numbers. Well, you can go ahead and with the row selected, you can either come up here on the home tab, go to the cells group, click on the format drop down arrow, and there's row height and column width. But we want to do it for the selected rows. So click on it opens up and you can go ahead and type in your numbers like let's do 15 hit enter and there you go and better yet you can come over here and right click or you can right click anywhere in the selection of the rows here and go to row height and then go ahead and adjust it 12.75 hit enter cool next if you want to be able to hide your columns like let's say i'm doing a presentation or i'm working on this and i don't want to focus on april in fact to be able to work and bring data closer together without deleting the column, I can right click on column F, the header that is, and go down to hide, and it collapses. I can also do it for rows, row 8 through 10. Maybe I just want to focus on that employee. So by right clicking on that selection and going to hide, there we go. Now I can focus on that employee, but of course the month totals is not accurate because it's including the hidden rows. And so if you actually do a little bit of work here, you can say, okay, 7, 11. Okay, something's off there. I don't know if you can see it, but you've got like a double line instead of a single line in between the two. And if you do your numbers as well as you know your alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, G, H. Okay, F is missing. 
So if you find out you're missing some data and it looks kind of funny to you, or you're missing some letters or numbers, then you've got some rows and columns that are being hidden. So to be able to bring them back because you're ready to bring this part up in your presentation or you want to be able to focus on it, then go ahead and you can't right click on a single column before or after the hidden column to unhide because it's not going to work. What you have to do is you have to select the column that's not hidden before it and after it because the guy's getting squished in between. So you got to go ahead and select both and right click on the selection to unhide and he pops out going, oh thanks, I can breathe now. And also for your rows, click from 7 to 11 so it's selected everything in between and then right click to unhide and cool, back to where we started. Now in addition to that, you can also hide your worksheets. So if I want to hide sheet one, right click and go to hide, it's gone. And then if I'm like, okay, where did it go? And I want to bring it back. Go ahead and right click on the worksheet to unhide it. And let me click and drag this up and it shows all the worksheets that are hidden. We just have one with it selected, click okie dokie and it's back. You can also come up here, click on the view tab, go to the window group and hide the entire workbook and it's gone. Oh, that's horrifying. And if you're like, what happened? Well, let's go ahead and close out and let's save it. And here it is right here. So if you double click and you open it up and you're like, oh my gosh, I lost everything. Well, if you remember, because you hit it for whatever reason, it could be because you don't want somebody else to open it up without applying a password to it. And so they don't look at things that they're not ready for maybe it's to hide during a presentation and you don't want to type in a password maybe you have a level one security where they don't automatically see it level two would be a password but you can come over here to the window group and click on unhide and that's the workbook you can have more than one hidden workbook and we'll cover the other options in a later training video but for right now we just have the one workbook click okie dokie and whew, i thought we lost everything Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please look in the description below this video.